I'm here to talk about the biggest and the most exciting milestone of ANZ Digital Assets journey. And to sum it up, I'm talking about cross-chain, cross-currency asset settlement. A mouthful, but at the end of this session, hopefully that will make sense. To get to that point, it's important to understand where the journey started and where we are now as a bank. We started our journey by creating a stable coin called $8DC. Once you have created a stable coin, it enables the customers to start transacting in the world of Web3. The next logical step for us, good, we have a stable coin so people can go use and buy those other assets in the tokenized form. Hence, we created a tokenization engine as well as a marketplace where customers, once the asset is tokenized, can be listed for sale. The first cab of the rank for us was carbon credits. So in March this year, we have tokenized carbon credits, and our customers were able to use Australian dollar stablecoin and purchase these assets. All sounds good till now? That's where more challenging stuff start coming in. Because every customer may not hold Australian dollar stablecoin. What if the customer holds New Zealand dollar stablecoin? What if that New Zealand dollar stablecoin is on another network and not on the same network where the tokenized asset is? So all the stuff which we have done till that doesn't make sense then, because these things can't interoperate. That's where the CCIP comes into picture. So what CCIP enables here is it enables seamless information and value flow. What I mean by that, let's look at this picture and we'll try to go into a bit of depth. So the box on the left is symbolizing the chain on which the buyer of the tokenized asset is. And on this box, you can see the, the buyer has New Zealand dollar stable coin. Whereas on the other chain, which is the seller's blockchain, that's where the reef credit, which is a tokenized asset, which buyer wants to purchase. But the seller want to receive Australian dollars. So we have a mismatch here. That buyer has New Zealand dollar, where seller want to sell this asset and get Aussie dollars. So remember the two words I said? Cross network or cross chain, cross currency, asset settlement. So if you look here, what is the information which has to flow between the two networks to enable this transaction? First piece of information is to which network I'm going and buying the asset. What is the chain ID? Second information which has to be communicated is what is the contract address of that particular marketplace contract so I can point to that contract and call the function. Without that, you can't execute that information. The third thing is details related to that specific order. I want to purchase hundreds of the reef credit and I want to pay X dollars per reef credit. That's all the information which has to flow from network number one to network number two to enable this transaction. And that's where CCIP comes into picture and when the buyer hits the purchase button, all that information get encoded, sent to the router which is deployed on the chain number one. And the router is smart. It's not dumb router. It's a CCIP router. Obviously, it's smart. It waits for the finality on the network number one, because until finality is not achieved, we may have some risks of double spending and things like that. And only when the finality is received, then it relays the information to the other network that use this information and value to purchase the asset. So if you look across this diagram, what's happening? New Zealand dollars are coming out from the customer account. On the fly, using FX API, get converted into Australian dollars. CCIP is used to encode all that information, send via decentralized Oracle network to the router on the other side. Information get decoded. Purchase happens. And when the purchase has happened, you are able to deliver the back asset again by using CCIP. This is what true asset interoperability look like, where user 
doesn't have to worry about that I need to be present on 100 networks to purchase these assets. I need to have all the stable coins in the world to purchase these assets. That's what the true asset interoperability look like when you use CCIP. Big thanks to Chainlink team. They have been an amazing partner in our ability to execute a live transaction on testnet. All the details are available in the white paper. So if you're interested, go have a look, ANZ CCIP case study, all the details, transaction hashes, you can look at all. Big thanks, you have been an amazing audience. Thank you.